Welcome back to another Future Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Dave. And today I'm here to talk to you about sleep and why it's maybe hard for a lot of us to sleep right now. Um, not just right now, but maybe it's been hard for us to sleep for a long time. And part of the reason for that is because when we're sleeping, we're entering into a very deep recovery state where our awareness of our physical environment around us starts to become very significantly reduced. For, for most of us, uh, especially humans, um, our sleep is the time when we are the least aware of our environment around us. So that's important because when you really think about what our nervous systems do to keep us safe, our fight or flight response needs to be reduced in activity and our parasympathetic or rest and digest response needs to be increased in activity because we are vulnerable when we sleep. So if we perceive fear or threat of any kind when we're trying to fall asleep, that could be anything from a lion outside our, our cave or our tent going you know, way back thousands of years, or it could be something like work the next day, a ton of responsibilities that are overwhelming, global pandemics, anything of this nature, that will all increase our sense of threat and decrease activity in our rest, or di rest and digest parasympathetic nervous system. So this is important because that threat, that sense of perceived threat, whether it comes from a, the, the knowing that there might be a predator around or from responsibilities, emails, overwhelming um, work or uh, things going on around us, pandemics, etc., that all primes our nervous system to not let us sleep because our nervous systems don't want us to sleep when there's threat around. If there's threat around and we fall asleep, we could die and then we can't continue on our journey of life. So these hardwired nervous systems, the sympathetic fight or flight, the parasympathetic rest and digest are programmed and hardwired to respond this way. However, we, unlike many of the other animals around, have a very large cortex um, this is the part of our brains that is on the surface layer of our brains that stores, for the most part, all of our memories and experiences, including emotional experiences. And so when we feel threatened, we also have an opportunity to question, is this a real threat or is this a threat that isn't actually a survival threat in the case of emails, traffic, overwhelming responsibilities, the global pandemic? Most of the time, these are not actually threats that are affecting our risk of surviving in the moment we're trying to fall asleep. They're things that are what we call existential threats or things that are perceived to be threatening on the long term because we don't have lions or saber-toothed tigers chasing us in the way that we did thousands of years ago. So interestingly, we can actually control this. And the way we control this is by practicing techniques that restore a sense of safety to the nervous system. So when safety is important because if we don't feel safe, we can't allow our parasympathetic nervous system to turn on, which then triggers our body to understand that we are safe enough to fall asleep. We need to be feel safe to fall asleep because sleep makes us physically vulnerable to threat. That being said, how do you feel safe? So breathing. Breathing is one of the most important ways to help ourselves feel safe and to help ourselves feel safe enough to access sleep states. One of my favorite breathing techniques I actually learned when I was trying to teach myself how to fall asleep when I had racing thoughts and overwhelming worry in medical school and um, maybe even a little before that in college. And what I started to do was to breathe slowly and intentionally focusing on my breath, coming into my mouth very slowly, as I talked about earlier on another, um, another future medicine, um, and really focusing on the breath reminds our minds and our bodies that if we have time to pay attention to the feeling of air coming into our nose and mouth and lungs, that we can't possibly be running from a lion in that moment. We can't possibly be in an immediate survival threat in that moment. So by breathing and teaching ourselves to breathe, as if we, as the way we breathe when we're sleeping, long, slow inhales and long, slow exhales, that reminds us that we're safe enough to fall asleep. Another technique is stretching and movement meditation. Uh, another technique that's a tool that we developed at the University of Pittsburgh is Apollo, 
which delivers a sense of soothing touch to the body that helps remind the body that if you have time to pay attention to this feeling of a gentle vibration on, on your skin, that you can't be possibly running from a lion in that moment. So it's okay for the stress response to come down and the rest and digest parasympathetic, parasympathetic response to come up. So these are different tools that can be used to help us fall asleep. Self-touch, putting pressure on our chest, gently rubbing our neck, um, gently rubbing the inside of the outside of the ear where there's a vagus nerve, uh, afferent or receptive terminal. Um, all of these things are different tools. Touch from a loved one, from a pet, all of these are different tools that can help us to feel safe, that can increase our access naturally to sleepy states that help us get better rest and feel better the next day. Thank you again for this great question about sleep because I know this is something that's affecting a lot of us right now, uh, myself included, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about this today. Stay tuned for more on future medicine.